this. Let me turn to the second um, concern that people have about markets and capitalism. And you, you've all seen this before, right? Well, socialism works in Europe. Uh, people are happier in Denmark. Uh, so why can't we adopt that here? Medicine is cheaper in Canada. I mean, I'll talk about health care later in the week, but this is the kind of thing that you hear again and again. Now, here's back to that index that I mentioned earlier. I've got a, a here's the list of the top 30 most free countries in the world out of about 158, I think, that were on the latest index. So the most free, economically free country in the world, Hong Kong, second is Singapore, New Zealand. We have somebody from New Zealand here. There we go. New Zealand. All right, number three. And has been there for quite some time, if I, if I remember correctly. Uh, Switzerland, and then a whole bunch tied for fifth. Canada, Georgia, that's not the state one door over. Um, uh, Ireland, Mauritius. I should give extra credit if you can find Mauritius or um, United Arab Emirates, um, Australia. We've got somebody from Australia here. There we go. Two people from Australia here. Uh, UK, um, Qatar, Chile, Jordan. Where's the United States? Oh, number 16. Uh, we used to be right up here near New Zealand, and um, we, we've dropped in the rankings a good bit in the last few years. Uh, Malta, Armenia, Estonia, Finland, Denmark, etc. All right. Now, what I want to point out here is you've got Denmark, which is always brought up as one of these countries where you know they're socialist and they're happy, and therefore we should be socialist, and they, then we'd be happy. Uh, and then you've got the Netherlands, number 25. Now, this is out of 158 or 59 countries. The distance between the Netherlands and the United States, and less between Denmark and the United States, is really not all that great. Um, they're well within the top quartile of economic freedom. The United States is number 16, they're 21 and 25. Now, their socialism works relative to many other countries because they're not very consistent with it. It is diluted with a hefty dose of other freedoms. The United States score, this is a 1 to 10 score that they're using on this index, is 7.75. The Netherlands, um, and, and the, lower, the, the, the higher the number, the less economic freedom you have. Um, the United States is 7.75. The Netherlands is 7.82. Denmark is 7.72, 0.03 away from the United States. The Netherlands ranks, if, they, if you divide it up into the subcategories of economic freedom, the Netherlands is number nine out of 158 on the legal system and property rights. They're number four on their monetary system. They're number four on the freedom to trade internationally. It's very highly ranked in many categories. Where is it low ranked? Uh, well, on the size of government. The size of the government is number 154 out of 150, actually I see now it's 159, 158. 154. So they are balancing a very large government with regard to their welfare state and some other things with some important economic freedoms where they rank very high. Denmark is the same way. Denmark is 155 out of 159 countries on the size of government but they, like the Netherlands, have a number of other important freedoms that help to offset that. So I would say that these countries are prosperous in spite of the size of their government, and they're enjoying the benefits of these other freedoms. By comparison, the United States is number 27 on the, on the legal system and property rights, number 40 on our monetary system, and number 60 on our freedom to trade internationally. So we have a smaller government, true, uh, than the Netherlands or, or Denmark, but we, have, we are much lower ranked on some other economic freedoms that are worth mentioning. Uh, incidentally, the top marginal corporate income tax rate is 39.1% in the United States. That's the third highest in the world and the highest among the 34 
industrialized OECD countries and the Netherlands, their corporate tax rate's only 25%. So I think it's a bit inappropriate to say, well, socialism works in the Netherlands and therefore we should copy what they're doing. The socialism looks different, but um, it's really uh, not, that, uh, not that far apart. Here are the bottom, I think in this case I had about the bottom 31 or 32 countries that are on the list, uh, <clears throat> just so you can see. <laughs> Did I miss something? What was? Oh, Venezuela, yes, well. <laughs> they're, not, they're not doing much to improve that ranking last uh, I saw either. Um, their inflation rate's very high, uh, price controls and everything, and uh, I read a few months ago the average Venezuelans lost like 15 or 20 pounds um, because of the difficulty of getting food. Um, anyway, um, uh, just to give you some perspective, remember I mentioned the United States ranks 7.75, I believe I said, on the ranking. Uh, Venezuela is 3.29. Um, uh, Argentina's 4.81. Ukraine, the lowest ranked European country, is 6.00. Uh, 22 of the bottom 31 countries are African. Georgia Yite, who's uh, 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 an economist from Ghana and a president of the Free Africa Foundation, says um, Africa is poor because she is not free. That is the key. Now, as to this happiness thing, I, I wanted to mention this uh, because it comes up repeatedly. There was a 1974 study by Richard Easterlin which produced something that lasted for a long time in economics and, and other um, disciplines uh, called the Easterlin Paradox. The study seemed to show that the wealthier countries didn't have happier people in them than poorer countries. And so for decades, people are citing this kind of thing. They're saying, well, look, it's, uh, you, can, you can increase your GDP and so forth, but you're not necessarily going to be better off uh, uh, mentally for this. Um, there were two, two 2008 studies that showed this paradox doesn't really exist that um, to the extent that you can measure happiness, and I think that's extremely problematic, I'm not suggesting that these are, uh, uh, that there's any really good way to do this, but to the extent that they surveyed people and, and tried to figure out how happy are you and so forth, uh, the studies indicated that rich people are happier than poor people, rich countries have happier people than poor countries, People get happier as they get richer. I mean, pretty much every dimension you want to consider, um, it is better for your well-being to have more um, income. Uh, the earlier study, the Easterlin study, simply had samples that were too small to find any significant differences. Um, certainly, the more recent studies were problematic. The Easterlin study appears to have been even more problematic. This uh, diagram has a series of bubbles. Uh, corresponding to the population. So you see China's here, India's here, there's the United States, and uh, there's Denmark right up there. Um, and uh, this shows uh, on the horizontal axis the GDP per capita in 2003 adjusted for differences in purchasing power across countries. And uh, here you've got mean life satisfaction um, according to their studies. And so you, you can see there, there's there's a pretty definite um, correlation between the two. 